Meat Mysteries got you swallowing a load of bologna? Fear not. It's time to set the record straight about America's favorite sausage. That's a bunch of bologna. It's easy to imagine that bologna is a cheap, working-class kind of food. This is because it's fairly inexpensive and often paired with ingredients like white bread and American cheese. Additionally, since it's easy and cheap to process, store, and serve, bologna quickly became a staple in institutions that needed to feed a lot of people cheaply and easily, such as schools and prisons. However, just because bologna isn't typically served on a baguette with gruyere doesn't mean bologna has always been a subpar variety of meat. That transition only came with the rise of the packaged food industry. Instead, bologna traces its roots right back to the city that shares its name, as well as its predecessor, Mortadella. In and around Bologna, Mortadella is still a beloved regional staple, a protected delicacy that requires skill and artistry to prepare. Clearly, Bologna's ancestor receives much more respect than its Oscar Mayer counterpart does on this side of the Atlantic. While Mortadella was the precursor to today's Bologna, it's important to note that the two meats are not identical. Yes, they are very similar and certainly resemble one another in a variety of ways, but there are noteworthy differences between bologna and mortadella. For one, mortadella is made with high-quality pork only. In contrast, bologna can be made using a variety of meats as the base. Additionally, bologna is processed in a way that produces a singularly textured and singularly hued round slice of meat, identical to every other slice in the stack. Mortadella, on the other hand, is spotted with pockets of fat and other ingredients such as spices and pistachios, which give the light pink slices a variety of texture, color, and flavor. And of course, mortadella is prized as part of Bologna's culture and heritage, whereas bologna doesn't always get a great rap. In other words, if you've tried one and not the other, you may be missing out, as both bologna and mortadella bring their own strengths to the table. While bologna can trace its roots to Italian mortadella, it is often associated with food culture in the United States. It's just bologna. However, bologna is not an all-American invention. It's not even the case that an American went to Italy, discovered mortadella, brought a recipe back home, and concocted bologna. Instead, like so many foods now labeled as all-American, bologna came over to the U.S. with immigrants who spread their cuisine far and wide. Although we don't know for certain, it's believed that German immigrants can be credited with introducing bologna to the United States. The regions in which bologna food culture is prevalent in the U.S. are the same areas that have historically been home to pockets of German immigrants. That said, other countries have their own claims on bologna, too. For example, the Newfoundland Times in Canada claims that bologna is synonymous with the province. And they also eat bologna in Australia, where it is known as poloni. The point? Despite what you might think, America certainly does not hold an exclusive claim on the concept of bologna. My bologna has a first name. It's O S C A R. The grocery store lunch meat aisle typically contains ham, chicken, turkey, and of course bologna. You can pretty much reliably find Oscar Mayer products throughout the United States. But while that's the most prevalent type of bologna, it's not the only option that exists. Even if you're just looking at bologna products in the United States, you'll find numerous regional takes on this classic meat. So-called German bologna typically has a strong garlic flavor, for example. Meanwhile, Lebanon bologna comes from Amish country in Pennsylvania. It's made with an array of spices then smoked for a summer sausage-like consistency. Ring bologna is very much like regular sandwich bologna, but it comes in a large sausage ring case for bite-sized rather than sandwich-sized slices. Sweet bologna has, you guessed it, a sweetener added, whether that's maple syrup, corn syrup, or plain sugar. Maybe it's because it was produced and sold so cheaply throughout the last century, or because you can't automatically identify what animal it came from. Whatever the case, bologna has developed a negative reputation as a mystery meat. And sure, you can't look at a slice of bologna the way you might a rack of ribs or ham hock. But that doesn't mean the U.S. Department of Agriculture is just letting producers put any old meat into your meat. Indeed, bologna is not as mysterious as it seems. According to the USDA, bologna is grouped into the same category as hot dogs. For all food items in this group, the USDA requires that the maker clearly identify what kind of meat is in the item. Additionally, if the bologna contains meat byproducts, the USDA requires that they be named on the label too. 
In other words, this mystery is one you can solve with just a little reading. Yes, the USDA lumps hot dogs into the same category as bologna as far as food safety guidelines go. And yes, they both have more or less a similar consistency. They're both pale pink and emulsified meat products too. But hot dogs and bologna are not exactly the same. And it comes down to much more than just the size difference. Despite what you might think, hot dogs are not just smaller cylinders of bologna. And bologna is not just an oversized hot dog processed into slices. Despite the similarities, there are a number of differences in flavors, seasonings, and the final product that mark a significant distinction between hot dogs and bologna. For example, hot dogs are often smoked and may have mustard powder added to the recipe. Hot dogs often come with their casing intact, while bologna does not. Likewise, you're probably not going to find myrtle berries in your hot dog. At the end of the day, you could consider hot dogs and bologna to be siblings. They share a lot of the same DNA but they're not identical. You've probably heard the story. Somewhere out there, there's a factory where they sweep the floor after the meat processing is finished and throw whatever they find into a vat. And that's bologna. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Horror stories surrounding the contents of bologna run rampant and kids and adults alike joke about all the suspicious, nasty ingredients lurking in processed meat. However, just like the USDA ensures that bologna's ingredients aren't a mystery, it also guarantees that producers aren't just slapping a bologna label on anything they want. According to the USDA, bologna must be made from beef, pork, turkey, chicken, or a mix of these proteins. Furthermore, the USDA doesn't permit certain types of mechanically separated meat to be used such as mechanically separated beef, which isn't considered safe for human consumption. Likewise, if a manufacturer uses a mechanical separator to remove meat from the bones for bologna and hot dog use, the machinery must meet certain specifications to guarantee that ground or crushed bones don't end up in your food. Just because bologna is a little bland looking and doesn't contain the variety of ingredients you'll find in mortadella, that doesn't mean bologna is also bland tasting or boring. In fact, you might find yourself surprised by the spices contained in the average bologna slice. Coriander, nutmeg, garlic, celery seed, allspice, and myrtle berry regularly make the cut. You likely already know most of these seasonings and may even have several in your spice cabinet at the moment, although myrtle berry is definitely a lot less common. So what is it, and what role does it play in making bologna? As it turns out, the ingredient is directly connected to bologna's Italian roots because these dried berries are frequently used in Mediterranean cooking. With a flavor likened to citrus and rosemary, myrtle berry has been historically used in wine and desserts and is believed to offer an array of health benefits. Children who come across the spelling of bologna for the first time might find themselves a little surprised. To most American ears, the word doesn't quite sound the way it's spelled. Surely bologna, with an E-Y, must be the proper spelling, right? Well. While that bologna is a slang term that sounds like this kind of food, it's not a word that came about in conjunction with bologna as a food. Instead, bologna is slang for nonsense, and it's a term that grew in popularity in the earlier part of the 1900s, when a New York politician began using it to describe federal bureaucracy. It's believed that the slang term may have been derived from the Irish word Blarney, which also means nonsense. Oh, baloney, old man! So then why do we pronounce baloney like we do, and not like the Italian city for which the meat was named? All right, uh, how do you want to pronounce this word? Baloney! <laughs> I don't know if you saw, there's a G in the word. One linguist told HuffPost that this was just an instance of Americans replacing the ending I and A in Italian words with a Y, in much the same way that Italia becomes Italy. The pronunciation of the city of Bologna sounds as if it has an I-A at the end, meaning it was subsequently Americanized into bologna. If you've scanned health-related headlines in the last few years, you may have gotten the impression that all deli meat, including bologna, is totally unhealthy. What's more, you may have concluded from the headlines that not only is deli meat bad for you, but it's downright dangerous, as it can cause all sorts of cancers. Whereas headlines like to dramatize the impacts that certain foods can have on our bodies, experts tend to be a little more restrained on their claims. One expert told the New York Times that although bologna isn't exactly great for you, you can eat it in moderation without any significant worry. Similarly, 
A nutritionist told USA Today that while prepackaged deli meat is high in preservatives and sodium, it can still be a source of protein in small quantities. However, if you already have a health concern such as high blood pressure, you may want to be extra cautious about your consumption. When buying any deli meat, you'd be better off choosing meat sliced at the deli counter rather than prepackaged options, which typically contain more preservatives and additives. For years, the common understanding has been that people shouldn't eat lunch meat while pregnant. If they did, the individuals and their unborn children were thought to be at risk for dangerous foodborne illnesses. In particular, listeria was a big worry, as it could lurk everywhere from unpasteurized milk to chicken salad and, yes, lunch meat. However, this is a broad generalization that overlooks some specific details, so it shouldn't necessarily be taken at face value. For example, the USDA clarifies that lunch meat is only a risk if it hasn't been thoroughly reheated. So while pregnant people shouldn't eat a piece of bologna right out of the fridge, you should be safe if you put the slice on a sub sandwich and reheat it to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. One doctor who spoke with Healthline agreed, further noting that heat should reduce the risk of listeria, and fried bologna is delicious. Spam. It's a lot of meat, but not a lot of money. For anyone who's had a taste of both Spam and bologna, the idea that they could be the same product is clearly false. However, it's still a misconception that comes up, particularly among those who deem all processed meats to be mystery meats, including these ones. The distinction is most evident when you look at their ingredient lists. Spam contains six ingredients, pork, salt, water, potato starch, sugar, and sodium nitrate. All of these items are mixed together, loaded into spam cans, cooked inside, and sent on their way. I don't like spam! Well, don't make a fuss, dear. I'll have your spam. I love it. I'm having spam, 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 spam. Easy peasy. In contrast, bologna contains far more ingredients, including many that the average consumer may not be able to confidently identify by name. And, of course, the way in which it is cooked and processed is completely different to spam. It's not usually canned, for one thing. So while the naysayers might hold these two foods in similarly low esteem, it's definitely not fair to say that they're the same thing. Truth is, spam and bologna are very different.